Hello everyone, Reza here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll go through 10 important shortcuts you need to know about when you work with a level sequencer inside Unreal Engine. This will allow us to speed up the process and not to focus too much on our point devices, whether it's a mouse or pen and tablet. Hope you find this video useful. Let's get started. Let's start with our scene. It's um, an asset pack from Epic Games Apartment Tech Props. That's the pack that I will be using for this particular tutorial. Here I am inside Unreal Engine. Uh, I brought one of the Cinecams to uh, the level sequencer and gave it a very subtle camera move. Nothing too specific change of depth of field so the focus distance does change i added a keyframe and a slight move with a touch of rotation nothing too complex all right let's uh, start with number one which is probably the easiest the one that many of you may know there are two caveats that you need to be careful about and that is the letter s to insert key on your selected track so if I go into transform and bring the head halfway through the timeline and press S, you can see now I inserted a keyframes for all the channels, which brings me to caveat number one, because of the nature of the letter S, you actually inserting keyframe on all the channels. And I mean all of them. So, things like scale chances are you would never use scale for camera so be mindful of that it does insert unnecessary keyframes unless you intentionally want to scale or rotate the selected track in my case i'm just going to select the scale and press delete the second one is you need to be careful about the interpolation because it does copy the interpolation from your track so my tracks are all linear so naturally the one that you insert also is going to be linear so if you're doing a chase through your camera or a follow through with your camera sometimes you actually don't want certain keys to be linear you actually want to change it to cubic auto in that case, you have to go and manually change it because letter S is just going to copy the interpolation from other keys. In this case, I have the manual focal distance set to, I believe, cubic auto, cubic smart auto. If I select the track and press S, it is going to give me cubic auto. So um, just to be mindful of the interpolation because that will have an impact on how your animation looks. While it's a single key solution to insert keys, you may or may not want to revisit it. Number two, middle mouse click. And that is going to insert keyframe when you're inside the curve editor. So if I go to my Cine camera, transform and look for a channel with rotation i can go in there and say you know what i'm going to insert a keyframe here letter s is not going to work for you middle mouse click is going to insert keyframe the rule for interpolation is again pretty much the same if you feel like you need to change the interpolation you need to do it manually so remember, middle mouse click when you're inside the Curve Editor. Number three, comma key and dot key on your keyboard. It simply jumps back and forth on keyframes in your selected track. So if I go and select Transform, you can just press dot to jump forward 
and comma to jump back and toggle between keys. Extremely useful if you have too many keys, especially certain keys right next to each other. Instead of zooming in and open curve editor, you can just jump back and forth and investigate the issue. Again, I can select my manual focus distance. I have only two keyframes. And what it does, it takes me to the beginning of the sequence and the end. Comma, dot. Number four includes the same combination of the keys, comma and dot, but with the alt held down. That allows you to go one frame back or one frame forward. It's great if you would like to investigate uh, a particular issue. Let's say things are flickering, there is a missing frame, camera does some weird things on a character, maybe there's a geo and a penetration you would like to investigate. So Alt, comma, is going to take you one frame back and Alt, dot, will take you one frame forward. Number five, control A, and that allows you to insert or add an actor from your outliner straight into your sequencer. Very, very useful. I use it all the time. So let's say I want to select this dock tape. I want to bring it into my level sequencer. Now, if you press control A while you're in the outliner, it's going to basically select everything, including all of your Cine cameras. That's really not what we want. What we want is to select the item and be in the level sequencer environment. Only then press control A and it drops it into your level sequencer and you can start keyframing your... So remember, control A adds the currently selected actor to the sequencer. Number six, control T for time and that takes you to a specific time in the timeline. So if I sort of scrub through the timeline and press control T and say, I want to go to the frame 20, I just type in 20, control T, take me to frame 50, control T, take me to frame 100, control T, bring me back to the first frame. So very efficient, easy to use, and it allows you to jump back and forth to a specific frame that you have in mind to review, to double check. Number seven, space to play and K to pause. And of course you can use your uh, time slider controls, but I found that pressing K, which is only a few keys above the space key, is going to make the job a lot faster. Number eight, left and right brackets to set start and an end for your sequence. That's the part you would like to render out and hand over to the client. And that's how you set the range. Left bracket to start sets the start time and right bracket sets the end time of the sequence to your playhead. Number nine, I and O. And they are going to help you to create custom timeline selection range. So if you wish to play back only just a few frames or only a chunk of your timeline, you really don't need to touch your start frame and your end frame of your sequence. You can create a custom timeline selection range. How to do that? You press I to select a starting point. You go through the frame range and you press O on your keyboard and you can see you have a blue portion. Now, by default, if you play, I'm going to press space, it still plays the entire range. If you only wish to play back the selected range, the custom selected range that you just made, you can go into this 
no looping button and click until you get to loop selection range. Now if I rewind, you can see the playback snaps to the custom range and I can just only playback the custom range using I and O. If you're happy with the result and you would like to remove it, simply right click on it and you go clear selection range. Finally, number 10, letter M allows you to insert custom marks on your timeline to add annotation to your edit. Extremely useful. So if I go and select around frame 10 and press M, if you look really closely, we have now a cyan looking bar that's been inserted. If I right click on it, I can now change the frame number, change the label, let's say music starts here, and you can add further comments, you can change the color, um, and if I now press enter, you can see I have an annotation, music starts here, let's go, I'm going to go a little bit further, I'm going to press M again, and I'm going to right click on it, and this time I'm going to say flare and that's my cue to sort of bring a little bit of lens flare in here you can go ahead and change a color to red and now I have few annotations in case if you would like to pass on the work to someone else or have some visual cues before things that you can add later M to create custom marks is a fantastic hotkey at any point of time if you would like to delete them can right click and delete all marks or click on the individual ones right click and only delete the specific selected marks now we're reaching towards the end of the tutorial I'm gonna give you two more hotkeys that I don't use as much but it can be useful the first one is control shift T cycles between your time code, seconds, and frames. In case if you wish to know what second you're in within your frame range, you can press Control Shift T and it kind of cycles between time code, seconds, and frames. Also, if you're a rigger or animator, F10 can be something useful if you bring a character with control rigs you can select specific controls and press f10 and what's that going to do is going to select or isolate those control rigs that you've selected and it's going to remove the rest of them from your display view so basically it's going to isolate your selected control rigs which can be extremely useful only if you work with control rigs all right that should do it i hope you found it useful and use these shortcuts and hotkeys in your own project until the next one see you guys later